Hey guys, Thunder E here, and welcome to another battle vid. This one is between the Galaxy S23 Ultra and the iPhone 14 Pro Max to find out which is the best smartphone out of the two. Now, if you join us for the very first time, we do videos like this and more. So go ahead and smash that subscribe button notification icon to get notified about more videos just like this. Now, in terms of hardware, both of them are gorgeous looking devices. The Galaxy display is 6.8 inches with a max net brightness at 1750. Same as last year, the iPhone beats in this category at 2000 indirect sunlight, but they are both lovely displays. Similarities also include 120 Hertz refresh rate for both displays, as well as also a variable, variable refresh rate or adaptive refresh rate, if you will. So that's pretty nice there with these devices. Well, let's look at the camera. Camera housing has four cameras for the Galaxy, three for the iPhone. The iPhone has a whopping 48 megapixel sensor. The Galaxy comes with a staggering 200 megapixel sensor at the back of the device. Now, when it's talking about lenses, the iPhone does have uh, ultra wide and a telephoto. The Galaxy does come with three orders, two telephotos, one 10 megapixels, one 10 periscopic, and also a 12 megapixel ultra wide. Now this brings us to the camera and what we can expect from them. Now, I don't do camera comparisons, so if you want a full detail, definitely go check out Danny Winget or of course, uh, SuperSaf to find out more intricacies about that. What I will do is show you some of the the images and stuff that I've captured. And I'll talk about one section after we complete this, which is of course the battle between Super Steady and of course Action Mode. I've got Brandon, Danny, you know, John. <laughs> so, like we're here and look at that thing, it's blown out on the iPhone. But anyway, let's talk about the comparison between darkness and light. <laughs> I know, right? That was, that was crazy. Anyway guys, welcome to my comparison between the Galaxy S23 Ultra and the iPhone 14 Pro Max. It's gonna be fun. I like the fact that both of them have features that are beneficial to one or the other. Uh, but when it comes to super steady versus action mode, Samsung has gone ahead and improved that quietly, uh, matching, matching almost similar resolution to the iPhone at QHD at 60 frames per second and defaults to initial shooting at ultra wide and then into, of course, 1X. I think the Galaxy has caught up. It is much better on ultra wide. It's not as, maybe not as good as the iPhone using the main sensor, but let me know your thoughts on that section. Now, some of the other aspects of the hardware I think you would like, of course, is the processor. We have the A15 Bionic on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, which we know quite well. Uh, and we now have the brand new uh, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy on the Galaxy S23 Ultra. Now, in terms of benchmarks and Geekbench scores, you guys wanna see that. And this is where the iPhone wins on a yearly basis and it continues. You can see higher scores in single core and multi-core for the iPhone compared to the Galaxy. The Galaxy gets close in single core, but not as close in multi-core. And then we go to compute, the Galaxy is uh, behind by about 5,000 points, if you will. Uh, but what does that mean in translation with all these high numbers, right, for our gaming experience? And this is where we go into games. Now, we played a lot of games on both devices, and I just did a gaming video on the Galaxy S23 Ultra, so check that for full gaming details. So we'll go with each game, signing off with Call of Duty uh, Mobile. Now, COD Mobile on the iPhone, you can play at actual uh, medium, um, you know, ultra max settings, which I figured would give me, you know, 89 
9 frames per second. Uh, while of course on the on the Galaxy, you can only do that on uh, uh, low with the max setting there. Now, what you actually get in performance is quite different. For the iPhone, I'm getting 60 frames per second. It stayed at 60. I tried everything and it stayed at 60. While the Galaxy did 89 frames per second. So there's a difference there. Now, not sure why that's the case. It might be a software thing, but I wanted to just kind of leave that for you. Now, moving over to PUBG, smooth extreme for both devices played at 60 frames per second. Um, Ultra HD extreme for both devices uh, played at 60 frames per second. And when we went over to Ultra HD Ultra, this is where the iPhone had a little edge here, going up to 48 and kind of averaging out of 45 frames per second. The Galaxy was still at 40. Uh, maybe it's a software update, but the iPhone has the edge here. Apex Legend for both devices played pretty well. Ultra HD Ultra, 60 frames per second, so it's very, very solid. Now, rounding it up, of course, is Genshin Impact, which we, should, we expected to see some differences. The iPhone last year didn't do as well, but of course, it's been updated to the latest software, and here we saw some huge improvements. The iPhone did a solid 59 frames per second all the way for 30 minutes, so that was very, very good. Now, moving over to the Galaxy, we just did our Galaxy video, and in that video, I showed you 55 frames per second. And some of you are like, well, you know what? Turn this off, turn that off. So I went and redid it again uh, a couple of times before this video. I didn't turn off GOS. I actually kept it the same. I just ran it again. And I got 60 frames per second for 30 minutes of gameplay. So the Galaxy S23 Ultra, yes, can do 60 frames per second with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy. Just want to put that out there for you guys. Now this brings us into temperatures. So what kind of temps were we getting? Well, I'll put it this way. For the iPhone uh, 14 Pro Max playing Genshin Impact, uh, the maximum I got was roughly around 117. Uh, it started getting really hot at 110, and this is roughly at the seven minute mark. So from then on, it just, temperatures went all the way up to 117. Actually got rather hot. While the Galaxy S23 Ultra stopped at 107 degrees, and this took roughly around 20 minutes of gameplay time for me to get to that temperature. So that's very important in terms of cooling and also the kind of temps you're getting with these devices. When it comes to gaming, it looks like they're evenly matched, uh, but again, that's just something to take note. You can see the differences there with both of them. But of course, speakers are something that's quite important to a lot of people, and we just did a speaker test where we saw how they both performed. I think the iPhone did a really good job and that's my pick. Some people think it's the Galaxy, but go ahead and check that video and make your decision for yourself because I think it's really close within the speaker uh, environment for both devices. All right, so let's wrap this up with a few miscellaneous things with both devices that are very unique to them. Now, the iPhone has Face ID and that works pretty fast, but of course, you know, it also works with a mask now as well. So if you are looking for security measures and how quick it is to access your device, Face ID works very well. The Galaxy has, of course, facial recognition, but also uses a fingerprint sensor. And they've got one that I think has been updated. It's very responsive, very fast on the end, the S23 Ultra, uh, which makes it quite unique. Now, the other thing here is that the Galaxy S23 Ultra has the S Pen. We know the S Pen has a ton of features um, and it's built in. It's something that no other device on the market has, and that is quite unique. Another feature I like on the Galaxy is the brand new Expert Roll, and it has a ton of features here. So you've got uh, the multiple exposure capture, uh, you can also capture at 12 megapixels, 50, and then 200 megapixels. But one that I do like is the astrophotography, which you would need a tripod uh, to actually mount this on, but you do have something called Sky Guide. This is something I have not found on any device. If I'm wrong, guys, let me know. But you can hide or show and what it does when you hit show. It shows you where the stars are. So if you're looking for a certain constellation or cluster of stars, you can actually look for it using you know AI mapping and go ahead and take your, your picture and you should be able to get the constellation you're looking for. That's actually pretty cool advancement for 
astrophotography. So what do I think? I think, honestly, both devices are evenly matched. I think Samsung has done a great job in improving the things that didn't work well with the S22 Ultra into the S23 Ultra here, especially when it comes to the camera and the gaming features. I think it really does well. I give the Galaxy the slight edge on gaming for me just because of those temperatures and staying cooler for much longer periods of time. But I want to know what you think. Which do you think is the better device here? And which do you think uh, handles any of those departments well? Leave your thoughts down below. If you also want to pick up either the iPhone 40 Pro Max or the brand new Galaxy S23 Ultra, use my link down below in the description. I do have a link, a custom link, uh, that will give you $150 credits to purchasing your S23 Ultra. So leave your thoughts down below and always enjoy your entertainment.